Hi everyone, this is Miss Lovelace. Um, recently, Miss Stewart came to me and told me about your upcoming project and said that y'all needed a little refresher over copyright, that y'all were going to be looking at some sources and using them in your upcoming project. So today, as your librarian, I am going to be going over the basics of copyright rules with you. Now, to start off, just like in your regular classroom here in the library, we also have standards and objectives that we follow. Um, so today, we're going to be going over um, some of our Texas School Librarian standards, basically telling us how um, our school librarians, library programs were offering information literacy, teaching you how to accurately evaluate and ethically use um, information, okay? And then specifically, we're going to be practicing the ethical and legal use of information. As today, we're going to be um, diving into fair use, intellectual freedom, information access, those kinds of things, specifically with copyright law. Um, so our objective today is that given a body of creative works, the students, all of you, will be able to analyze each work to determine whether a cop whether it is copyrighted work or public domain work and then use and credit each work accordingly, okay? So we're gonna go over what it is, and then when you start on your projects, you'll be able to determine, is it copyrighted, is it not? How am I going to be able to use it, okay? All right, so first off, let's start with what is copyright, okay? The definition of copyright is the legal right to any original work. All these original works, um, include written work, something that has been written, whether it be a short story, a play, a novel, um, pictures that people take, um, photography, film, any movies that you see, any um, short films that people record. Recordings as in um, a speech, or um, this goes along with film as well, with the sounds that go along with that. Music, this is where you have your big artists who create songs, artwork, um, this is, you know, paintings, that sort of thing. It goes on and on and on. Basically, think any original work can be included under this right, okay? Copyright laws, they protect a wide variety of people, writers, artists, other creators, and it helps them get the composite compensation that they deserve, so the pay that they deserve, and the recognition, so people know that this is their work. Now, everyone must follow copyright law. It is the law. This is in our U.S. Constitution. It is part of the laws of the land, and just to let you know that violating copyright law is a serious offense, and we'll go into that in just a second. Okay? Now, what does copyright protect? It protects creative works. It stops others from copying or sharing or performing other people's works. So basically, you can't steal someone's original work. You can't share it with other people without their permission, or you can't perform it, okay? An example of this would be if you wanted to sing a famous singer's song, you have to get permission to sing their song, okay? Like I mentioned before, it is found in the U.S. Constitution. This is our law. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that all copyright work is protected as soon as it is written down or created. This means that we are all protected. So some examples, if you take a really cool picture on Instagram and it is your work, that is copyrighted. If you create a TikTok video and it is your original work, not stolen from someone else, that is your intellectual property. What does copyright not protect? However, there are some things it does not cover. Titles, names, short phrases, slogans. It's really hard to get these things copyrighted. Um, if you have a certain idea, a method, a system, basically like math formulas or um, anything that's commonly known information, um, you cannot copyright that because that's something that's just common knowledge, right? One thing that people don't realize is choreographic work. Basically, um, dancers who create their own choreography, that can't be copyrighted unless it's been recorded on a video. Then they can copyright the recording of that. And then another fun fact, fashion is not protected under copyright. You can copyright the 
the pattern because that is the artist's original work. That is the fashion designer's original work. But the actual arting article of clothing cannot be copyrighted. Okay. The exception to following copyright rule is fair use. Now, fair use um, is something that we use a lot in education. Okay. Sometimes you'll see your teachers will take little sections of books or little copies. This is what fair use is. Okay. It allows limited use of copyright work without getting permission as long as you follow certain guidelines. Okay. So first, it has to be for nonprofit use. Education is nonprofit use, okay? We're not going out and trying to make money off of it. You're using it for educational purposes. The second thing, like we were talking about, it's for educational purposes, but not necessarily educational in nature, right? Okay? So, for example, um, a teacher can use... Um, an article that they found or um, a picture or small little things like that to use in is not necessarily an educational thing. However, the teacher is using it for a lesson, okay? Um, another very important thing about fair use is that you're only using a minimal portion of the work. You are not using the full body of work. If Someone is trying to copy every single page of a book that is not following fair use. However, if they only take a few paragraphs for an educational purpose, yes, that would be fair use. And then the last one, that using this would not negatively impact potential sales, meaning that whatever you're using this for is not going to take away from what the author um, can make for compensation. Okay, so when we are using copyrighted material, if possible, we always want to ask for permission. However, remember, permission is not needed for materials that are part of the public domain. When I mean, when I say public domain, I mean things that may have expired copyright protections or materials that are created by employees of our federal government um, as they did their work, right? So examples of this would be any works of Shakespeare. Shakespeare was not around when we had copyright laws, so he's part of the public domain. The Bible is not covered under copyright. However, if it was a specific Bible published by a certain company, then yes. But if we're saying the general Bible that has not been changed, then that would be public domain. And then, of course, U.S. federal legislative enactments, they are from the federal government and created by employees of the federal government. So when we are seeking permission, um, we want to keep in mind that some, a lot of times when we ask, we won't have to pay for anything, but sometimes it will cost money. An example of this is that if any of you are in one act play on campus or in theater in general, every time the theater teacher wants to perform a play, she has to, or he has to get special permission to um, be able to perform the play because of copyright laws. And they actually have to pay royalty fees every single time that play is performed, okay? So it's very important to ask for permission whenever we're able to. When you're asking for permission, please be specific. Tell them what um, pages do you wish to copy? What section do you want to have? And then always keep copies of corresponding for your records. Um, and then, just as we talked about on the previous slide, permission is not needed for public domain works or if you're following fair use agreements. Okay. Now, something very serious is copyright infringement. This is what we were talking about before. If you are copying or sharing someone else's work without their permission, this is against the law. Okay. Examples of this. Downloading music. Um, when I was younger, there was a company called LimeWire, and people would download music illegally, and that was very illegal. Lots of people got in trouble for it. If you're downloading movies online without permission or not paying, ebooks, games, these are all from illegal sources that do not have permission from the artist or creator. That is copyright infringement. Also, if you, especially nowadays, we have a logic digital copies of books and movies and all sorts of stuff. So it's okay to have our own personal collection. However, if you're uploading these collections of 
movies, books, e-books, um, music, games, all of that. If you're uploading it for your friends or other people to copy and use, that is copyright infringement. This is illegal. It is against the law and it has very serious penalties that depending on how serious it is, some people have gone to jail for it and have had to pay very hefty fines. Okay. Now, um, before we wrap up, I have a few resources for you to go over with Ms. Stewart, just a few videos. And then lastly, if you have any questions or concerns about copyright, if you're a little afraid like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing this right, come visit me in the library for more information. And I will be glad to help you with your upcoming project. All right. Thank you.